Hello everyone and welcome to the Eco Investment Update for September 10th, 2017. And obviously thoughts and prayers go to those who have not only been in Hurricane Irma and are sustaining those hurricane winds now and potential damage still to come, but of course the people that were in Hurricane Harvey it hit the uh, Houston area, well, just a couple weeks ago. It's been a very busy weather period. Throw on top of that an eight-point-something earthquake down in southern Mexico. And, well, sometimes it looks like uh, things are spinning a little out of control. And the market has been, the investment markets have been very stable, but I really get the sense, and I have for the last month or so, that uh, things are rolling over. One of the reasons is that we've had uh, NASDAQ sort of weak in some of the key leading stocks. And also recently the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average has really had trouble having those powerful bounce back rallies that characterize that period from the time that President Trump was elected in November 2016 until probably about uh, early August. Of course, this is a seasonally weak time of year for uh, investment markets, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do have a more significant downtrend here. I still think there's, there's certain bellwether flags, certain flags if we were to compare it to the hurricane, there's certain storm warning tropical warning, gale warning flags that are going up. Number one, the Vice Chairman Stanley Fisher, the Federal Reserve, resigned. Well, in mid-August, of course, he's no spring chicken, but it seems unusual not to uh, not to finish out the term. So, I don't know, maybe he perceives with the things that uh, aren't getting done with the Trump administration in terms of the big plans for undoing the Obamacare, for tax uh, tax cuts coming up, it's a, a lot of people, not just him, may get the sense that things aren't going to really be a slam dunk. And even though we're only uh, in the first year of a four-year administration, there's still a tremendous amount of friction here. And the president has had consistently, uh, consistently within the Democratic Party, people, Democrat Party people will oppose him now increasingly within the Republican Party. He could find himself more and more isolated and, and have an inability to do anything as president. Of course, as you know, the markets have built in a lot of expectations of tax cuts, the Obamacare being repealed, and uh, there'll be, have to be disappointment to be unwound, and the market is priced for perfection. That is the key. Gold and silver are definitely sending messages. Gold and silver have been very strong for the past 30 days. Gold surged where it had been stuck in that range between $1,220 and $1,280 an ounce. It surged out of that range to the $1,340 level where we see silver comfortably at $18 an ounce. There's something going on there. And in addition, interest rates have come back down on the 10-year from 2.6, well, almost down to 2% again. Why don't interest rates rise? Quite simply, because even though the U.S. government has a limitless appetite for raising money and for sucking in financing, it's still not enough to make a dent in all the liquidity out there. There's just simply not enough borrowing going on out there to uh, upset the uh, balance and there's no real signs of super strength within the economy. You know, so, uh, very quietly a lot of high tech companies are starting to lay people off. I was really surprised that Oracle quietly announced with no comment that they'd have no comment that they're laying off uh, 500 people. It's not, uh, you know, the competition, the, the difficulty in raising incremental revenue and earnings is starting to starting to put pressure on the uh, high-tech companies that they've got to rein in their cost structures too. Of course there's hiring also taking place but you've got to be pretty qualified for those type of jobs. 
As for the rest of the economy, you need only ride around and look at all the help wanted or now hiring signs out there, but they all tend to be in service sector positions or in positions where you need a skill set, either like a class A or class B license to drive a truck or a bus or you need some skill as a welder, or a carpenter, or a roofer. They're not jobs that the average person, especially uh, youngsters, step into those jobs and, uh, and, and expect to find employment. So we continue to have this very stratified sort of employment where it's hard to expand services on the low side because of uh, you know, a perceived labor shortage that may actually be a reality developing here. And yet a surplus of people as we continue to take out tens of thousands of retail jobs, which have been a little better paying. Some of them are commissioned, but that we're losing more and more retail jobs. And it's been a theme on this, on this uh, update for almost three years, over three years now, that the, retails, the retail sector has uh, just basically disintegrated in this country and moved more and more to a model based on internet sales and rapid delivery. It's interesting, I don't know if you saw it, that Amazon bought Whole Foods Market and one of the first things they did was go in and almost slash prices 50% on a lot of items there. So I tell you friends, anywhere there's a big profit margin or perceived profit margin, you can expect that to be under attack as the uh, deflationary forces still reign strong out there. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned, stay, stay safe. As I've been saying for the past four or five months, I really don't have uh, anything in the market and I'm very comfortable with that now. Just a few very small speculative positions, but otherwise, I'm very, very happy. See you in a couple weeks. Stay safe.